And the business I'd like to introduce to you today and talk a little bit about is uh, our business, Horseshoe Bend Cellars Vineyard and Winery. So the areas that I want to cover this morning uh, in my presentation is a little bit about the company history, our mission and vision statements, talk a little bit about our current state of the business as it's evolving, and then our next steps and challenges as we move into the future. So a little bit about company history. So the business was formally named Wichita Falls Vineyard and Winery and was established in 2003. So it's got a very long history in this area. My wife and I, Linda, purchased the business in November of 2017. So at that point, we renamed the business to Horseshoe Bend Cellars Vineyard and Winery. And that's our biggest push right now is to roll out the rebranding program. We decided to idle the business for about 90 days to make some necessary changes in the vineyard and the winery operations. What we didn't want to see happen was people who had been coming there come to the business and see the same old, same old under a different name. We wanted to create some excitement and buzz when they come visit our operations. We had ribbon cutting with the chamber on March 2018. It was a tremendous event. We had about 240 people attend that two or three hour event, so we're very pleased about that. And we are a full commercial vineyard and winery operations. We have acreages of the grapes that we're in the process of replanting. And we have a capacity of about 12,000 cases a year that we are nowhere near. So we're pretty excited about the future growth that this business has. So our mission statement, very simply, provide a relaxing experience for individuals to sample and learn about wines, food pairing, and the process of making wines while enjoying the relaxed atmosphere of music, food, art, events, games, and good conversation. We're just suggesting, as our tagline is, just stop and come enjoy life with us. Our vision for going forward. So our vision is to create a destination where customers will visit us. They need a reason to come to the winery. Once they're there, experience the taste for the, and the experience, and then finally return. Once we do that, we're getting an awful lot of repeat business, but our challenge right now is getting people to understand that there is a winery just six miles outside of Wichita Falls. Uh, we're gonna be producing wines of high quality made from primarily Texas grapes. And the reason I say that is, is that we want to introduce some unique and new tastes beyond just grapes. So this last week, we introduced a new wine made from honey. So it's called a mead. Now next week we're releasing a variation of that and I put a little bit of orange juice in it. So it's a citrus mead. And in about three weeks we bought some um, a cherry juice and we're gonna ferment that and put a little brandy in it and it's gonna be called a German Kirsch wine. So our intent is to move beyond the grapes, you know, keep all those there, but continuously introduce new flavors so that people have a reason to come back to the winery. Uh, our center point of the business will be to we'll offer wine tastings, tours of the vineyard operations, and then purchase wine by the glass, as well as cheese boards. Uh, it's a family operation where I'm the president, my wife is chief op or, uh, CFO, my youngest daughter is general manager, my oldest daughter writes the articles for our cheese pairings for magazines, my middle daughter does all the graphics work, so our Facebook site and our graphics and that stuff, so it's truly a family business here and that stuff. Um, provide an atmosphere again to sit back and relax. We've got a number of outdoor seatings. We're in a very rural area. We're sitting on 75 acres. It's not uncommon to see coyotes, roadrunners, turkeys, turkeys galore out there over the course of the day just to kind of watch the wildlife in the area. And then we also have a, uh, a uh, um, banquet area to the top that we can host up to 30 individuals for guests. So we've done a number of meetings, networking meetings there, so it's starting to gain a little bit of traction. Uh, the business will evolve over three phases, so I'll kind of give a little bit of clarity on what. The initial phase was uh, concentrated on cleaning and, and improving the aesthetics of the operations. That has been completely done. Second phase is to move the business to the name, and then finally is expand products and services and utilize the banquet facility. So current state of the business, our labels are now being approved through the federal government and state agencies. Uh, this is our new label. This is our branding here. Each of the banners will tell you whether or not you're in a red wine, a white wine. The back of the label talks a little bit about the wine that's in the bottle and then also gives an indication of the food pairing, 
and then the flavor profile. If it's a sweet wine, semi-sweet. We've had uh, a replanting in the vineyard last weekend, an absolute tremendous success. We've been doing some digital marketing through Facebook. We've been having engagement parties out at the winery. We had Texoma Business Council there yesterday. Uh, we have some printed rack cards that we're putting in hotel lobbies. We have an article in this month's Live It magazine that features our wines paired with hamburgers. We're also on the Texas Wine Trail up here. We're releasing new wines like I mentioned. We also have chocolate sauces that you can see that you put over pound cake. They're in port wine, cabernet wine, and brandy. Our next steps are challenges. This is where I could use some help from everybody. Here's our challenges. Increase awareness of the operations. We're into a strong rebranding program that's only days old. I'm continuously running into people throughout the area saying, there's a winery in this area? Yeah, it's been here since 2003. So I'm trying to educate the population, give them a reason to visit, and then a reason to return. Enjoy the visit and then the new wines that are coming. That's our business. Thank you. So, any questions, observations, help with... You mentioned a banquet facility, meeting room Yes. Area. How many people go that whole? So... Small, large... Yeah. So if we're serving dinner, or you know, people bring in food and things like that, it's 30 people. If it's set up like this for a presentation, it's 40 people. And we're charging forty dollars an hour. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does it have uh, audio visual and everything? It does not. It has a blank wall. Yeah. Uh, at this point, a lot of the meetings are this type of a talking meeting and things of that nature. Engagement parties. We've had three engagement parties where the gentlemen will bring the family and that stuff. And then, as you can see, they went out to our barrel fountain and proposed in front of the fountain. So, it's pretty cool. Our tours are free. Okay, so you that uh, if you show up and it's a small group, like five to ten, no big deal. But if you're bringing a group of thirty, I just like a little bit advance notice. Okay, but we kind of require you take wine with you as you go through the tour. So, okay. yeah, so it's it's a foregone conclusion, right? Sure, that wouldn't be an issue. What would you consider to be your main competition? Other Texas wineries, like, you know, Fresh Street, down the road, Gano, over in West Texas? Well, or? honestly, I don't look at wineries as my competition. So you mentioned a couple of wineries that are a little over an hour to hour and 15 minutes away. So that's kind of a, a challenge for people to drive down here and come back. Um, there are two more wineries that are starting to grow here or start to begin in Wichita Falls and the three of us are talking about creating a Wichita Falls wine trail. So we're not looking at each other as competitors, we're looking at a, co a collaborative environment because what I'm offering is a rural setting, the other two wineries will offer more of an urban setting. So we're looking for, a, like I said, a collaboration piece. What's the, what's the trend on wine consumption? It's going up. It's uh, it's growing between five and eight percent per year for the last 15 years. Texas itself. So if you look at the states that produce wine or have wineries, California is by far number one with about 4,500 wineries. They'll probably always be number one. Number two is Washington State. Number three is Oregon. Number four is New York State. Texas is number five. In 2016, Texas was number six. We overcame Virginia. We are growing in double digit growth in Texas. We're running at about 18 to 22% per year for the last five years of growth. So we are in a great opportunity for Texas wines. Do you have a goal to get your, your brand on the shelf in retail? Yeah, so today um, our reach is very limited and, and I did that by, uh, by design. Uh, because the brand, the, the labels take uh, between eight and ten weeks to get approved from the federal government, then through the state government. So my labels are just now coming through that process of things that I did back in January. So I did not want to push the wines because it had the wrong label on. So now the labels are coming in, and I had a, a great meeting uh, two weeks ago with United Supermarkets in Lubbock, 
and they're going to put us on uh, uh, the three stores in town here. There's one in Burke Burnett, two in town here. And they said, let's give that a try, come back in three months, and we'll start talking about the Metroplex. So they, they also, uh, in June, Yeah, we'll be there. Yes, yeah, over at the Wellington. Yep, we signed up for that, and that'll be another coming up. Our biggest challenge right now is, uh, you know, I've ran into a number of people who even live in Iowa Park for their lives go, there's a winery out there? So I need to increase awareness. So our Facebook site is pretty good. We've picked up a number of followers. We're up just over 2,200 now in the last three months. Our website is launched. We still got to add content to that. Um, the rack cards, I had a great call yesterday from a travel center uh, right outside of Houston on I-10. They've asked for a bunch of our rack cards to be sent down there. I don't know how they found us or got a hold of us, but she asked for 500 rack cards. We have rack cards in the campsites. We have them in probably 95% of the hotel lobbies. And I'm always asking people when they show up, well, how'd you find us in that stuff? And the rack cards are doing a good job. Uh, we have a Google business site. They found, you know, wineries near you. And then it gets on the GPS and brings us here. And we have a couple wayfinding signs. We've got a large sign on um, 367, a large sign on Old Iowa Park Road and Peterson Road, and then a very large one about a mile and a half up on the road on Peterson. Yeah. Yeah. I'm mapping it, but still to see it, I was like, okay, I'm going for it. We've had a couple of people drive by and go, oh, there's a winery here. Stop, turn around, and come down to the winery. So it's, it, they're working, you know. Have you contacted the base at all? Because Outdoor Rec will do a lot of Wine trips, and they've connected a lot with Rocking Embrace. I don't know. Yes. With that. And so we've done barbecues out there, or we've gone up there on the way to Ames and Ovens and those. Right. Bus, like. So we just got approval to be in the BX uh, on the base. That's the big one, and then the gas station right at the front gate. Uh, we were at in February a on-site uh, just base party and that stuff. So we were just presenting there, and next Tuesday we're having I. I think they call themselves the Wine Club of Shepherd Air Force Base. There's about 30 ladies coming out and enjoying some of our wines and tours and that yeah, stuff. Okay. 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 Uh, we've had a ZVB out visit us about three weeks ago, and they're going to start to bring the trolley out and drop people off and things like that. So we're in our infancy. Like I said, I, I didn't start the marketing program till May 1st because I, I did not want to confuse the consumer of the different labels. But now they're coming in quite rapid fashion. So. so do you want your goal right now, kind of the question I'm getting, your goal right now is you want people to come to the winery. You want to be more of a destination. That, that's where you want to focus your efforts right now, getting people to come to the yes. winery, as opposed to generating the retail presence uh, in, in the different I, I, I want to be able to differentiate. So one of the things with a winery is once you have somebody come to the winery, experience the tour and the ambiance and things like that, you create a strong bond with that consumer. They're very likely then to seek out your brand at the retail store versus walking in and then you've got all these bottles to choose from. So my push right now is get them to the winery. Can you talk to uh, the members of Country Meadows? Is that supposed to be a wedding venue? No, I have not. That's a good idea. That would be a great partnership. Absolutely. Oh, that's a good th Thank you for bringing that. We also have partnered with Odd Duck Coffee, mm -hmm. and they just opened a wine bar a couple of weeks ago, so they're featuring exclusively our wines in their wine bar. Oh, down there. Yeah. Uh, you talk about actually reaching out to some of the uh, more upscale restaurants or something? Again, no, I have not, um, but it's on my ticky list to do. <laughs> very, very good at it. Uh, for the fact that part of being local. Yeah. Uh, I know working with a restaurant industry for a long time, if you have something that's local, people are like, oh, okay. I've just seen Texas experience. I want to make Texas make a big Exactly. There's Texas proud. is really pervasive. One of the things I think for bringing it up was we're going to stop at the country club and I'm even willing to private label for the country club as an example you know horseshoe bend sellers country club blend whatever the case might be um, I've also asked Adrienne the other day to give me a list of all the civic organizations in town like Rotary and Kiwanis 
Um, everybody like that is looking for speakers for this. So I'm going to get on a speaking tour and present something very similar, again, to create awareness in our, in our community that we've got this out here. Don. Uh, well, first of all, under the rotary, we'll probably want to stand up I, I'm not opposed to that. Just a breakfast meeting. I don't have a breakfast wine yet, so sorry. My question is, if you, if one of your number one priorities is to get people to the wine room, to get them to understand that the wine is here, you have any kind of strategy with the referral strategy. So say I send Good somebody not. out there, and then you ask the question, hey, how do you know about it? And you'll say, that great guy, uh, Thomas Webb, sent me there. <laughs> and you'll say, oh, I'll write that down. And the next one, no, it comes. And there's four and and all that. We have not. The only thing that, honestly, my wife and I kicked around just the other evening was if somebody is there, let's say two couples enjoying some wine and cheese, we'd approach them and say, if you're having a good time and you really like what you're doing, put it on Facebook, tag us, and I'll take a discount off your, your cheese tray or cheese board and stuff like that. So it, it works, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. You may have already answered this. Have you thought about associating yourself with another event like Hotter or something like that? No, we have not done that. Uh, the only booth that we, we did do back in, I think it was early March, uh, it was a downtown festival and we had a booth inside of the big blue lobby. And I gotta admit, that was really good for us. We had a lot of awareness and things like that. But, but again, my labels weren't done yet. So again, I didn't wanna get too carried away with the branding that was there because we bought the rights to the old labels just to get us through this period and then now our push comes. Yes. So, who are you actually trying to reach? Everybody? Or uh, people? Like, people who drink wine. Yeah. Our, our, our target audience, honestly, is females between 30 and 60. Okay. That's, That's our right. target audience, yeah. I like that destination idea because I've watched Rocky Emmy's home for the last few years, and they're the same way. They have some retail, but really people flood into that area. Exactly. And I'm very closer now, so. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we talk about competition. I, I, on one hand, I look at Blue Ostrich and Arche and 4R as competition, but they're also a collaborative environment because we're all on the same wine trail. An uh, individual coming out of the Metroplex will more likely go to several wineries than just make that two-hour drive for one winery. So that's the collaborative environment. Competition, again, you know, we... we I think those wineries are great, and as a matter of fact, we had so much admiration is why we decided to do what we did. But they're still an hour and a half away. They're in a country road, and after having a couple glasses of wine, some people kind of go, mm, I don't know if I want to do that, you know? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so when I built the driveway, um, I had a large turnaround area for a bus in anticipation of maybe somebody coming out with some larger vehicles myself. Yeah. Do you, do you see the, the same evolution of craft beer uh, occurring uh, This is stronger. The, the pace of growth in wine in the United States, specifically Texas, is phenomenal right now. Uh, like I said, right now, for the last five years, they've been running between 18 and 22 percent growth for wineries. It's growing. It's also very concentrated down near the Austin, Fredericksburg area. I mean, there's a ton of wineries down 290 down there. So their problem is starting to become, how do I differentiate myself from the guy a mile up the road? So I'm hoping I have that problem in about 10 years. But, but today, I look at the Sixth Street Winery and Hook and Ladder Winery as partners in business. We've had a couple of casual conversations. Um, we've all said, let's put a date on the calendar. We'll come to some, uh, each other's wineries and go, how can we create a wine trail for Wichita Falls? And then you know, each of us put in some money for some marketing campaigns and that stuff. That, to me, is pretty exciting. Thank you. Especially somebody who saw it previously. Yeah.
see what it is now. And you guys have done an excellent job Thank you. of taking that over and, and really uh, understanding the, the, the hurdles that the other groups have to go through. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, that was what we wanted to do, was make a, a distinct first impression for somebody to visit us. And I think we've achieved that. Now we have to build on that foundation. Chocolate, the, yeah. we got to try some of our new wines. I'm pretty pleased about the honey-based wines. And then the Kirsch, I've had a couple of small samples I made. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty good. But the alcohol content will be about 22%, so it'll be up there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Any more questions for Scott? Very good. Thank you. Scott, please. Can you get through?